There have been numerous scientific discoveries within the different branches of science, like physics and chemistry. However, there have been few to zero popularized innovations when it comes to biology. There are even transitions in the study of physics, but when it comes to biology, organisms are still approached in a deterministic manner. However, there have been biological discoveries that show how we as humans are different from what was previously perceived. In this book, we will find out how new biological studies contribute to the understanding and growth of us as human beings. Through comparing the innovative discoveries to how we humankind acts, the author also shows new findings on how humans respond, react, and survive in today's world. Here are the top seven lessons from the book The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. Lesson 1. Cooperate instead of compete. Whenever we think of the concept of evolution and the different theories that accompany it, our first thought is Charles Darwin. Many believe that Darwin was the first to discover evolution. However, a French biologist, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, actually learned of evolution a few decades before Charles Darwin did. There's also a difference between the tone of their discoveries. While Darwin greatly believed that the survival of the fittest spurred evolution, Lamarck actually posited that it was the concept of cooperation that developed evolution. The author of the book greatly sides with Lamarck and sees that they're both backed by biological discoveries. As humans, we grow through cooperating rather than competing. If we look at how single-celled organisms decided that it is easier to survive if they work together, hence the birth of multicellular life, then we can better understand that we weren't born to compete with each other. Instead, we should cooperate with the environment and our fellow people throughout our existence. Lesson 2. Interact with your environment. In a recent discovery, it was found that the brain of a cell doesn't reside in its nucleus but in its membrane. So what is the cell membrane? This membrane surrounds the outside of the cell, which houses receptor and effector proteins. Since the cell membrane is the outer layer of the cell, the receptor proteins it houses pick up signals from the environment. These signals then go to the effector proteins, which then turn these signals into action. This shows that as humans, our growth and development are greatly influenced by our environment. We respond depending how our environment makes us feel. We do not react based on how our genes are made up. So, women aren't extra emotional because of their DNA, but are most likely made emotional by different environmental factors, such as culture, upbringing, and different stimuli. Lesson 3. Determine your own destiny. Another idea deeply embedded in biology is that our genes determine our destiny. This is shown in Darwin's theory of genetic determinism, where it's said that genes determine the production of proteins that form an organism's body and thinking. However, Lipton says that genes cannot determine our whole biology. If so, we would have a gene for each protein, which means we should have around 120,000 genes instead of our 25,000 genes. Therefore, it doesn't matter much what we're born with but how we grow up. The book also highlights that the environment we have around us is a better determinant of our destiny rather than the genes we're born with. The author says this by comparing us to the regulatory protein, which surrounds the DNA housed in the cell's nucleus. These proteins react with the environment, which then helps determine the destiny of one cell. This is why the author also highlights the role of parents in our growth and development. Whether one's parents nurture them or not also plays a great role in one's becoming. Lesson 4. Continue to improve. Since biology rarely receives much attention in the development and innovation field, different medical theories and practices are already outdated. This in turn puts humans in more danger. In 2003, it was said that the illnesses developed from medical treatments were the number one killer in the United States. So, why did this come to be? The author says that the sole reason for this is physics. Yes, biology and physics are both within the scientific umbrella, but why physics? This is because biological innovation follows the footsteps of physics. Although physics has already shifted to following Einstein's views of A, sometimes leads to B, but it can also lead to C, biology still stays with the Newtonian point of view. This means that biological discoveries still stick with the A always leads to B, which leads to C belief. In simpler terms, if an antidote to an illness is already discovered, then the treatment stays the same. However, organisms do not respond and act in a linear manner. So it's better if biology continues to improve and look for better ways to treat such illnesses instead of staying in its old ways. In a sense, we can also apply this to ourselves as humans. We cannot be stuck in our current ways all the time and should look for ways to improve and better ourselves. Lesson 5. Control Your Mind and Beliefs In the book, the author mentions Candace Peart's discovery, which is a reminder that our minds are fascinatingly powerful. Peart found out that the mind is not only located in our heads, but is situated in signal molecules throughout our bodies. These signal molecules send information to the brain. 
Hurd also discovered that our mind can create these so-called molecules of emotion, which can program our body to either feel better or worse. This means that as humans, we're capable of acting beyond our instincts and teaching ourselves behavior. However, this discovery should come with a warning to guard the messages our brain receives. Our program behavior can either be for the good or bad. It all depends on what we feed our minds. Lesson 6. Grow and Protect Another biological discovery noted in the book is that evolution has taught us two survival mechanisms, growth and protection. Lipton noted that cells placed in a culture dish would have two reactions depending on what was put in with them. If cells were placed with toxins, cells would stay far away from it. But when placed with a nutrient-rich substance, the cells would inch closer to it. This shows that as humans were programmed to either grow or protect ourselves. And once again, our reaction is dependent on our environment. Of course, when we're in healthy and nurturing environments, we grow. However, when there are stressors in our lives, we tend to close up and protect ourselves more. And when we protect ourselves, our hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, or what we call the HPA axis, shields us against external threats while suppressing our immune system. This is what is famously known as the fight or flight response. Although designed to protect us, the HPA axis does get easily triggered in stressful situations. So, try to regulate your stress levels so as not to feel frightful most of the time. Lesson 7. Live as an image of the universe. The author goes on to also say that there is biological evidence that we are made in the image of God. However, this is meant in a way that we're formed from the universe or whoever created the universe. This was said because every cell in our body has a reaction from our surroundings and thus informs how we behave and how our identities are formed. And since cells also make up the environment, then isn't it safe to say that we're also created from the environment? The author also goes on to say that there's evidence that we continue to exist even after death. But how? According to the author, our cells are covered with identity receptors, which make us unique. These specific sets of identity receptors continue to exist even after our death. And when someone comes along with the same set of identity receptors as we used to have, then the broadcast of ourselves would reappear. In conclusion, this book shows us that genes do not control our lives anymore. Latest scientific research shows that our lives are influenced by external factors, such as our environment and parents. Therefore, we should devote more time in understanding the new discoveries and learnings from biological research. As humans, we can be programmed to live better lives if we want to. We just have to find the environment that will nurture us. How are you affected by your surroundings? Do you think there's such a thing as program behavior? Tell me in the comments section. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.